Namaste, Sakshi, Manasakshi. I am Priya Goteti. Welcome to Immigration Talk Show with Prashanti Reddy from Law Office of Prashanti Reddy PLCC. Please note that now Sakshi TV has five immigration shows every day. Monday with Somi Reddy Law Firms, Tuesday with Kaveti Law Firms, Wednesday with Prashanti Reddy, Thursday with Chan Parvataneni and Friday with Banu Ilendar. Please tune in to, to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, please contact usa.sakshi.com or call us at 866-725-7441. Before we begin the show, please note that this information, this show is only for information purpose only and, for, and not for any legal advice. If you wanted to have any legal advice, please contact the attorney directly and Sakshi TV or its agents are not responsible for use of this information. We, uh, and please reach out to readyesq.com for any legal advice. Without any further delay, let's welcome Prashanti Retigar. Hi, Prashanti Retigar. How are you? Hello, Andy Priya. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And it's always nice to have you on our show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so today our topic is new rules on validity of green card. We heard that there are some new rules that have been changed. Mm -hmm. So can you please uh, explain us the new rules on it? Sure. So um, <clears throat> um, just taking a step back, you know, the green card is valid uh, for a certain period of time. And after the validity of the green card expires, you have to extend the card. That doesn't mean that your green card status expires. It's just that the card expires and it needs to be renewed. So the card could be for 10 years. Uh, and if when you need to get it renewed, there's certain processes that you need to follow, right? So this new law, um, as of September 18, 2024, um, basically the new law says that the validity period of the green card is extended automatically by 36 months for lawful permanent residents who filed their form I-90 application to replace or renew their permanent resident card. What does this mean? This means that as I said, you have to extend the green card uh, when the card, is, the physical card is actually expiring. <clears throat> and previously, uh, you know, the processing times were not that long. So you would file an I-90 and it would get appro uh, approved in a few months time. And in the meantime, while it was pending, you could always go to the local office and get a added stamp, like a green card stamp, if you needed to travel, if there was some emergency. Now the I-90 uh, is taking so long to process, it's taking a couple of years to process the extension of the card. So what USCIS has done is has automatically extended um, the green card, uh, even though it's invalid, they treat it as if it's valid. So previously the card used to be valid for 24 months. Um, that is after expiry and if you file the extension, then it's considered to be valid for 24 months. And USCIS sent a receipt out uh, stating that based on this receipt and in conjunction with the actual card, if you present both, then it's valid for 24 months. Now, <clears throat> as of September 10th, it's valid for 36 months. So this shows that USCIS is taking even longer to process uh, green card application extensions. And so they have extended the validity period by 36 months, from 24 to 36 months. Um, so that's the really the new law. Uh, and um, yeah, and so the only requirement, um, you know, so that you should be able to um, take make use of this new law is that uh, you get a receipt, you apply on time, you get a receipt. Uh, the receipt now, the new receipts that are coming in will automatically say that this green card is automatically extended by um, 36 months. And so if you're traveling, you need to take a copy of the receipt, if possible, the original, and the ex the um, expired green card that you have. So take both those and travel if you need to travel. Um, earlier, what they would do is when you went in for your biometrics to, um, you know, for the extension of your green card, you have to do biometrics, meaning you have to go and give your, take your get your photo taken, you have to give your fingerprints, so they used to uh, extend the green card by putting a sticker on the green card. So now all that is eliminated. It's just based on the receipt. Now, for some reason, say your um, green card is lost. So the original green card is not there. So that means, you know, it's not an extension. It's a replacement of a green card. 
in which case then you'd really have to take that receipt and you'll have to take most probably go to the local office, USCIS office and receive that added stamp. Um, you know, uh, after you file the I-90, they'll give you the added stamp and then that will be valid. Then you reuse that stamp and the receipt, um, you know, to show that uh, you are still a permanent resident or as evidence that you're a permanent resident. President, a permanent resident. So that's a little bit about the new law and, um, you know, that automatic extension of the green card. Uh, so any changes in green card renewal process? With reference to um, the renewal process of the green card, really nothing has changed. Everything remains the same. You still have to apply for the I-90, pay the fee, and go for the biometrics interview, etc. Uh, so uh, can we, uh, if the green card is like uh, expired or something, can we again file for the renewal? Yes, absolutely. So as I said, the permanent resident status never expires. Once you're a permanent resident, you're always a permanent. That's why it's called permanent resident, right? So the only mm -hmm. thing is the card expires and you need to get that extended. And usually they give cards for uh, not lifetime, but for a certain period of time because they want to keep uh, taking new biometrics and updating your uh, information and, you know, doing security checks. Uh, when to renew or replace our green card? <clears throat> um, so um, your green card is either, you can renew or replace if your green card is expired or will expire within the next six months, which means that you can expi you can extend within six months of expiry. If your previous card was lost or stolen or mutilated or destroyed for some reason, um, then also you can you have to apply for a replacement card. If you received your card before you were 18 and now you've reached eight, you've uh, crossed eight, uh, if before 14, sorry, and now you've crossed 14, then also you need to apply for a new card. Um, and there's some other situations in which um, you have to apply. You have previously, you have a previous version of the old card. You know, there was an old card before uh, and uh, now there's a new card. So if you need to, if you have the old version, then you need to replace it and get the new new version as well. If the card has some wrong information, also then you need to replace it and get that information corrected. If you've changed your names or some other biometric information has changed, since you last received the card, then also you need to replace it. Uh, <clears throat> if you got a green card, but you never received the actual physical card, then you could apply for a replacement, uh, or apply for another card and you will then, you know, then you can get the card. If you're a conditional permanent resident, resident you must replace your card if, conditional permanent resident is, uh, if you get a green card based on marriage, then you get a green card only for three years. Uh, and then you have to remove um, conditions uh, by showing that you are still married to your spouse or if you're not married, you know, file a waiver, etc., and remove conditions on your green card so you can get a permanent card. In that situation also, then you have to file, uh, you know, the card, you have to replace your card if it was lost or stolen. Same thing, incorrect information if you change your name uh, or if you didn't receive the card that was um, that you were supposed to receive. Uh, so that's some information on who should file for a replacement or a renewal of a green card. So how to uh, how to do the green card renewal? Like what is the process? How to renew green card? If you're a permanent resident um, and you need to replace or renew your green card, you can do that online uh, or you can do that by mail. If you're either way, you can do that by using the form I-90. Um, so you can file online, you can file uh, and pay, pay the fee also online. And you have to typically submit a copy of your previous card. And uh, you have to pay the correct fee and submit a passport copy. Uh, you could do this. Um, nowadays, they allow there's online filing also. You can do the same thing online, upload all the documentation and pay the fee um by credit card or uh, you know ACH transfer if you're doing it by um mail then you can fill out a credit card up a form if you want to pay by credit card or you can just send a check or money order 
Okay. So, uh, and as I said, uh, once you file this, then you will get a receipt and then the receipt will automatically say that uh, your, all the new receipts will say that your green card has been temporarily extended for a period of 36 months. Okay. Uh, so um, that's what will happen. You'll get the receipt. Um, but if for some reason you don't have your old card, then um, you can, of course, go to the local office, take um, appointment and get that added card, alien document identification and telecommunication card added stamp on your passport and that will serve as proof that you are a permanent resident. Um, if you need help obtaining the added card, uh, you need to visit the USCIS, as I said, contact center web page um, and then connect with the USCIS representative, um, et cetera, et cetera, and they'll give you an appointment and then take it from there. It's basically like taking an info pass. Okay. Um, so that's a little bit about how to apply. Um, yeah. Uh, so whenever we uh, think about applying green card, we hear about form N-400. What does this form N-400 mean? Oh, so an N-400 is actually not for a green card. N-400 is for citizenship. So after you get the green card, if you want to file for citizenship, um, you can you can you know file the N four hundred. So people who have been on a green card, say if you're on a green card based on marriage, then you have to wait for three years before you can apply your N four hundred, which is the citizenship uh, application. And um, if you're filed, if you got your green card based on um, say employment, then you have to wait for five years before you can file your citizenship uh, through that N four hundred application okay so usually how much time might it it take like if we apply for citizenship from green card to citizenship like how long it might take like three five years well yeah for three years if you're you can only apply after a period of three years if yes, you okay. get your green card based on marriage and you can apply after a period of five years if you get your green card say based on employment and then once you file, that is again processing time. Now citizenship, everything is taking so long with USCIS backlogs. Citizenship also, applications also are taking a year or longer to just get for an interview. All citizenship cases are interviewed, so you have to wait for your interview. Once you get your interview and once you pass it, um, then you might have to wait um, you know, for the oath ceremony. In some states, oath ceremony happens the same day. Uh, at the same place. Sometimes, like in New York, you have to wait for your oath ceremony, and that could take some time because that it happens in a, it doesn't happen on the same day. Once okay. the oath ceremony takes place and you get the naturalization certificate in hand on the day of your oath, uh, then you go ahead. Um, then you are uh, a citizen, and then you can go ahead and apply for a passport. So that's the process for you know getting citizenship from from uh, green card status. Okay, uh, so do we lose green card if N uh, is the form N four hundred is denied? Uh, not not necessarily. You don't because that really depends on why the N four hundred was denied. So if the um, N four hundred was denied based on some issue with reference to your green card, for example, if the officers uh, at the interview finds out that you got your green card through some fraud or that you shouldn't have got the green card and you got the green card even before you were eligible or when you were not eligible, then it's possible that, uh, of course, your citizenship will be denied, but it's possible that they might um, take away your green card as well, uh, revoke the green card as well in those situations. It happens not very often, but it does happen. Also in circumstances where um, you go for your citizenship interview or when you do, do your biometrics, some kind of criminal conviction comes out. It um, uh, USCIS comes to know that you are convicted of a felony, say, then, um, you know, you might lose your green card status as well. But in general, if your citizenship was denied because you didn't meet the requirements of citizenship and not for any fraud, then uh, that doesn't really affect your green card. You can just refile for your citizenship once you meet the requirements. 
Uh, so how long do we need to wait uh, if an uh, form N-400 is denied? Uh, how long we need to wait for to refile for the citizenship? So it really depends on um, why it was denied. Uh, mm -hmm. If it was denied because you didn't meet the requirements, say, uh, I just told you that you have to wait for five years. If you uh, Once you get a green card, if you get it through employment basis, if say you did not wait for five years and you filed after four years, then obviously they're going to deny the citizenship. So you'll have to wait for one more year uh, and meet those requirements before you file. Sometimes you might have had a green card for 10 years, but maybe you didn't meet the physical um, presence requirement. So out of the five years that you were you had a green card, you should show that you were physically present in the US for at least half that time, for two and a half years. And say uh, they are not able to see physical presence, say they only see it for two years, then you have to wait for another six months, remain in the country for six months and then file for your citizenship. So if time was not the issue, then you can file immediately if there's something else that you can easily overcome by refiling, then you can, um, you know, find as well um, as soon as you know you have overcome that problem. Uh, even if uh, are there any are there any cases where uh, they went for the interview and the uh, the interview got rejected not because of the criminal cases or something but they got rejected by some other cases. So at the time also the green card will be valid. Yes, but as long as uh, it was not affected due to any problem with how they got the green card uh, mm -hmm. or with any criminal cases, as I said, then the green card will continue to be valid and they continue to be a permanent resident status. Um, there were instances in which um, at the citizenship interview, they questioned uh, people getting how they got their green card, but they did not, they did not revoke it. They did not get citizenship, but they didn't revoke their green card. So it really depends on what USCIS decides to do. For example, in one case, there was um, it happened a few years ago, many years ago, when an employer um, committed some fraud with reference to filing green cards for his employees. And he was convicted only after, many years later. And by then, these employees already had their green card and the they, they did not they did not commit any fraud and they were not aware of any fraud that was committed. The employer did something. Um, so when these people years later went for a citizenship interview, they denied the citizenship on the basis that, you know, that particular company was, that person was arrested for fraud. And the reason for arrest was the issues that came up with the, the filing of the green cards for his employees. But in those in, in that instance, they did not really it did not affect their green card, but unfortunately they could not get citizenship, but you know, so it depends on USCIS as to how far they will go. If it's a criminal case that if they've been convicted of a felony, most probably they would lose their green card. Uh, again, that depends on whether it's, again, it can depend if it's a first time, um, if it's only a misdemeanor, not a felony, or maybe this happened many years ago, uh, even then they may not take any action. So it really based on a case by case basis. Okay. Uh, so what are the changes for the N-400 form? Or do we have any law changes uh, regarding N-400 forms? Yeah, so um, just as um, uh, things are changing with all the other forms and there are always updates with USCIS with reference to green cards, etc. cetera, uh, there have been changes in the form with reference to um, the N-400 forms as well recently. Um, they uh, announced as of April 2024, they've, they've published the new forms and they'll only accept the new forms as of April 1, 2024. There've actually been a lot of changes and it's surprising if you don't, uh, I mean, uh, usually forms change, but there are only small updates. But I think with reference to the, um, this time, this year, there've been a lot of updates with a lot of forms. And a lot of things have changed in the forms and the fees have changed as well. So starting with the fees, um, you don't require a separate uh, biometric fee anymore. And there's only one fee and the fee has increased to 760. Um, if you file by paper, uh, you can also file an N-400 application online. 
in which case then the fee is 710. Uh, and there's no biometrics fee uh, exemption for applicants 75 years of age or over. So before, if you're over 75, you have to pay as one fee. If you're under 75, you have to pay another fee. It's the same fee now for everyone, whether you are giving biometrics or not. The only difference is between the paper um, and the online filing. That's the only difference right now. Um, so is there, well, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, do we, uh, so do we have any waiver for the fee or any exceptions or it's just that everybody has to pay, pay the fee for the The exceptions are very limited right now. The way it is that everybody pretty much has to pay the fee. Uh, with reference to um, name, they've changed many things. Another thing that they've changed is the legal, the, the name. The applicant's current legal name is the name on their birth certificate, unless it has subsequently changed by marriage or divorce or whatever. It's not necessary that the name, they have to put the exact name that appears on the green card. Before the question was to put the name that appears on the green card. Now they're just saying, put your current legal name. So that's another change. The N-400 no longer asks applicant to include their name exactly as it appears on their permanent resident card. Um, but that doesn't mean um, the new form doesn't um, ask applicants to provide uh, all the other names used. So before you had to put the name that you are currently using and you had to put all your names that you have used in the past including your nicknames, your middle names, your married name, uh, you know, your name before your marriage, et cetera, et cetera. Now they're not asking for all that information. So okay. that's a change also that has happened. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. I guess it's because they can anyway find out all the names that you have used through CBP, et cetera. Um, and they're also named, the name also appears on the permanent resident card. So maybe they don't need you to uh, put in all the names, um, though that would be useful because usually they ask for all these names to be put in so that they can check for any criminal records. Um, so I don't know why they did that. Anyway, um, they've also put in another cha um, change, which is uh, male, female, and other. So they also have an X if you don't want to identify which gender you belong to or you don't identify with any gender, you can put an X as well. Um, so country applicant should list the name of the country as it was known on the day they were born. So there's a question of what country should the applicant list as their country of origin. Um, now they should list the country, the name based on which it was known. Say you were previously in, um, I don't know, some Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia. Now there is no Czechoslovakia, right? So you have to say that if it was at the time of your birth, it was Czechoslovakia, you have to say Czechoslovakia. So whatever the country's name was at the time of your birth, maybe in other country doesn't even exist, but you put it uh, in the state that it existed at the time of your birth. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, last week we were discussing about the impacts of immigration rules because of elections, what can be changed and everything. So uh, right now we are seeing that some new rules have come for green card, uh, some form changes. So do you think this will continue or how would it, this pattern would be like after the elections or based upon which party? Yeah, so <clears throat> there have been some changes uh, in the forms. Um, the changes in the forms might have just been to make it maybe to improve the flow of the form or to... Uh, get additional information because something has changed. For example, the advanced parole form, I-765 form has changed quite a bit because there is a new uh, parole uh, type, which is parole in place. So it's a new law uh, given to people who, um, who have US citizen spouses and um, cannot leave, cannot adjust status because you know they entered illegally but they still need to get some status because their spouses are US citizens. So they're giving them parole in place and that, that same form has to be used for it. So in order to um, be able to use that form, they had to change it drastically. So there's something like that always going on. <clears throat> and that's why the form changed. With reference to fees, the fee has changed across the board. 
as of April 2024, uh, fee has changed for everyone, for all categories, more for some and less for some. This is because, um, uh, you know, fee change hasn't happened for some time. And so USCIS has justified it saying that we haven't increased the fee for a long time. So it was long overdue. And because of COVID, we didn't get many applications and uh, we have backlogs, which we need to clear. Therefore, we need to collect more fees. So uh, fee changed, a fee change occurred because of that. Um, with reference to um, any positive that things that happened under this uh, government, a um, lot of things happen, whatever could happen um, within the process, you know, within the power of the executive body. Because, you know, for any real change to happen, uh, the Congress and the, the Congress has to pass it, right? Yes. And no law can change unless the Congress passes it. So whatever laws have changed has, be, has because of court orders, because they've interpreted the laws differently, or because... Um, something was done within the powers of the executive. And so, for example, uh, the payroll in place is one example of what has changed. Um, EB1A, so they are making changes to employment-based category one. They are trying to relax the requirements. They're trying to increase the scope of who can qualify under extraordinary ability within, within the parameters of the law, <clears throat> small changes. So they've done some things like that. Um, they've, you know, removed um, some of the restricted requirements under uh, Trump. They have removed them and bring, brought them back to what it was before. Um, they have, um, you know, started this H-1B registration process. And then there was a lot of duplicate filings because of the H-1B registration process. And they changed that by um, changing the regulation. And they said in the regulation that you cannot file duplicate H-1B uh, lottery. If you filed once, then you can file, but it can, it will not be counted more than once. So they've removed um, the incentive that beneficiaries have had to file duplicate H-1B registrations. So they've done a bunch of things, whatever they could, but any real reform can happen only if uh, one party and that part, um, the party which is favorable to immigration, which is right now the Democratic Party, if that one party has control over both the House and Senate, then we can see real change. We can see change in um, green card numbers, hopefully the backlog with green card numbers, we can see that there's some change with reference to that. And, you know, there's been no real immigration reform for years now, so almost since the 1990s. Uh, so it's time for some reform, but nothing will happen uh, until, you know, one party has majority. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Prashanti Garu, for sharing all this information. Uh, viewers, please stay tuned for more topics on immigration. This is Priya Kotetis signing off. Thank you. Thank you, Priya.